Hello Bobby, uh, welcome back. So in the last video, we did a couple of experiments right with this uh, charger and we saw how long it takes to charge a mobile and so on. Yeah. So uh, were you happy with those experiments? Mm. Uh, it served the purpose, but I would say it was not so rigorous. Not so rigorous, uh, but why do you think so? Uh, there were many approximations. Okay, so can you elaborate on this a little bit more? Maybe we can take some other example. Sure. Let's say I want the value of E. Okay, but uh, to how many decimal places? Maybe up to two decimal places. Okay, I can try to evaluate that for you. Uh, okay, there is some useless envelope here. <laughs> so let me do this calculation and see. So I would say E is equal to 1 plus 1 plus half plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 24. Right, so this is 2.5 plus 0 0.166, you know, plus maybe 1 by, I will approximate this guy by 1 by 25, which is uh, 0 0.04, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. So, if I add all this, I get 2 point approximately, okay, 2.71. Oh, this is close to, so how did you get this? Yeah, so I'll, I'll explain this to you, right? So, um, we have seen earlier, uh, based on something known as a Taylor series, it is possible to expand e power x as 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial plus x cubed by 3 factorial plus, you know, so on, x power n by n factorial all the way okay. up to infinity. That is how you wrote this. Exactly, right? Okay. So, I just had to substitute the value of e x as 1, e power 1, I simply got 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 4. Now, you said you wanted only two decimal places and yeah. I figured that maybe beyond 5 factorial, 6 factorial because it 5 factorial is division by 120, Yeah. right? That becomes division like by 100 approximately and that's going to start adding to the third decimal onwards. So, I didn't have to really worry about that. So, I truncated this expansion here, Okay. right? Okay. And said, uh, you know, this is 4 factorial, factorial sorry, yeah. right? And I also made one more approximation. This is actually 1 by 24, which I approximated as 1 by 25 because okay, it's… Because you know that. I know 100 by 25. Hmm. So, therefore, I got 0 0.04 and you add all this and I got approximately 2.71. Oh. So, if the requirement was one more digit, then you would have added one more. I would have added maybe a couple of more terms okay, because, okay. Uh, yeah, because 5 factorial is division by 100, 6 factorial is about 720. Mm -hmm. So, I would have to go about 2 or 3 terms Correct. more, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I would have got the answer to whatever, you know, accuracy you needed. So, that is how we make approximations depending on the requirement. Exactly, right. So, uh, you know, I can, I can give you one more example, right. Apparently, in villages, Right? When people actually dig a well, right? They are asked to dig a well which for the is water. water. Okay. For the water, exactly, uh -huh. right? Which mm. is circular and they charge based on the area that you, you mean the cost of the work. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. The mm -hmm. cost of the uh, you know digging mm -hmm. is basically proportional to the area okay, of the sand that has to be removed and into the depth, essentially the volume. Mm -hmm. Right. Now how do you approximate this uh, thing, right? Of course, you know, because people are not really worried about calculus and all that, right? They just need a working formula. Mm. So, what people do apparently is they just take this square, 
Okay, let's assume this is D. They take the area of the square which is D square. Okay. And say 75% of that is the area of the circle. Uh -huh. Now, this seems very simple and very usable. So, this 75 comes from? Yeah. So, if you just write this as 3 by 4 into D squared. Okay. You get the point? Mm -hmm. So, so pi is approximated. Exactly. The <laughs> value of pi is approximated as 3. Right. So, this is pi d squared by 4 which is exactly the area of the circle. circle. And pi which is 3.14 is approximated as 3 and therefore, it is based on a very rigorous correct formula. But the approximation is very simple and correct to use. Right. So, uh, is this what we did in our battery, uh, you know, charger experiment as well? Yeah. See, charger experiment, we were looking at uh, how fast each one is charging. Okay. So, we wanted to know charger X is better than charger Y and so on. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you, uh, so, you are saying that, you know, the wall charger and the USB charger are approximately similar, but the infotainment charger is yeah. not useful Yes, and maybe if I remember right, the wall charger was able to charge twice as fast compared correct, correct. to the uh, power USB in the car, Yeah, right. So, yeah. okay. So, you are saying that all we were worried about is this first order information. Yeah, that was the only information we were looking for. Okay. Actually, now that you mention it, I do remember that, you know, we had actually got uh, 41 seconds, right? We had got something like 41 yeah, seconds, yeah. right? We made a measurement of 41 seconds, right? And 21 seconds, right? But we approximated this as 40, 40 and 20. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. So, uh, so to the first, you know, the tens place, I think we is all we were looking at, yeah. not even the units yeah. place of, of time, right? Okay. So, Therefore, it is still a useful experiment and a correct experiment to do. Correct. But uh, suppose I wanted to get this answer to write to milliseconds of you know how much time to, does each charger take. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think we should do then? Then maybe we should look at see while this was being charged, maybe the cell phone was doing something, some WAP app would have been working. Okay. So, so yes. probably we should turn off all the apps. Background activity. Yeah. Okay. And maybe you have done this experiments at uh, different locations. So the signal spunk may oh. not be the same. Yeah, that's a good point. So, what do you do for that? Put it in airplane mode. Okay. You got to put it in airplane mode. So, that the signal strength is not a problem. Yeah. No, it is not trying to receive yeah. some weak signal and yeah. process that. Yeah. Right. I Basically, agree. we are removing approximations one by one. Yeah, correct. Right. And uh, if I want more precisely or uh, probably I will measure the current that is drawn from the charger. Okay. So, you are saying. So, I have some more information to. Okay. Okay, so this is interesting. So, what you are saying here is one way we know that okay, the mobile took certain time to charge, but this is giving you additional information of current and thereby you can check the result in two different ways, yeah. right? So, okay, so checking in two different ways, okay. And we may also, you know, repeat this experiments and see how good is the repeatability. Ha, ah, that is, I understand because we just did. Once. One measurement, yeah. right? And I think this is also important. Repeatability. Okay, so you are saying that if we wanted to do this rigorously, we would have to do this maybe 1% charging for 20 times yeah. and take an average reading yeah. of all that, yeah. right? Okay, so, so that is because, you know, you could have some noise Correct. in one odd measurement yeah. and that could actually put you off completely. Okay, I think that's a. I very would also good point. charge the battery always from same charging point in the sense. Yeah, correct. Let's right? say forty-two, okay. forty-one, or okay. 
because the battery may not be linear throughout the yeah yeah i think that, that is true because i think we have all observed that when the battery charges from zero it's quite clear that it takes much longer yeah. to get to 10% yeah. than it takes from 40 to 50% correct, right correct and likewise when i go to the end right 90 to 100 can take much longer yeah. than it took from yeah. 50 to 60 yeah. for at example. least it's not the same throughout it's not the same throughout so you have to operate in a very similar region preferably yeah. the same starting correct. point correct. yeah correct. i think that's a very good uh, uh, point and uh, so i think what we are essentially coming to is engineers in general do what is known as back of the envelope calculations right yes. and that's why that envelope <laughs> was used here right so uh, i think it's good maybe we'll just list down some features right back of the envelope okay so what do you think back of the envelope calculation is right so it is first of all it is based on a very su sound scientific principle right based on a sound scientific principle for example the taylor series expansion for e power x or the area of the circle right they were both accurate expressions if you took enough number of terms you would get e power x to whatever accuracy you wanted yeah so it's based on a sound scientific principle uh, it involves approximation But the approximations are known. It's not yes. an unknown approximation. Yes, I think that is very important. Yeah. Like we we are we know what the approximations are. Like we had listed earlier, you know. So if you remove these approximations, the experiment will become very rigorous. Correct. Right. So there are some approximations, and the most important thing is, I think, the fact that you know we discussed how we dropped forty-one. We approximated forty-one to forty, twenty-one to twenty is the order of magnitude yeah yeah so the order of magnitude is you know for example if i am trying to estimate some some number which is like 1000 right then i don't care if it is actually 1010 or 1009 yeah. or 999 right that decimal that units place is not so important right so we just want to make sure we are correct at the you know the highest decimal place that we are looking for very loosely put right and uh, for a given application and the kind of inference we are trying to do you might need different orders of yeah. magnitude right yeah. so uh, you will see later in this course as well there are lots of places where you will be using simulators now as an engineer it is very important to you know know how to use the simulator but one should not be handicapped without the simulator yeah, right yeah. in the sense one should be able to get do a back of the envelope calculation and get an order of magnitude estimate of the number yes. because sometimes your simulator could just give you a wrong answer yeah. some settings could be wrong exactly <laughs> right and you could just get garbage out of it yes. the only way to check that is if you have an estimate of what the expected answer should be and that comes from back of the envelope calculations and that's why this is a very very important feature for any engineer to use and uh, you know i also uh, uh, advise the viewers to read up on what fermi did when you know he, the he were they were building the atomic bomb mm -hmm. right and how he actually used bits and pieces of paper to estimate the yield of the bomb okay right he just dropped bits of paper and saw how far it mm -hmm. moved mm -hmm. right and based on that he was able to estimate uh, the yield of the bomb so that's how powerful this technique is and uh, it is something that every engineer must 